Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom music edition for the week of... Oh my. That's not the right outfit. That's the right outfit. June 11th is this week's week in nerddom and let's get into that intro real quick. Quiet on the set. Rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we have to get into this week's sponsor. We got a new sponsor this week, not one that's really paying me yet, but it will. This one will. This one actually will, besides the t-shirts. Those pay me when you guys buy them. This week's sponsor has been brought to you by both Mercari and Poshmark. This is a very strange sponsor, you say. It's true, but uh, my girlfriend and I are selling a bunch of stuff trying to clear out our house because uh, she has collected clothes since she was probably 15 years old. So she has a lot of vintage stuff, I'm putting pictures up here, they're cycling through. Check them out. I'll leave a link to her Mercari and her Poshmark down in the description so you can go buy some of this vintage stuff, any of you ladies out there. Uh, we will be selling a couple of my things as well, so there will be guy stuff. Kind of nerdy stuff, as you might imagine. But again, this episode is brought to you by both Mercari and Poshmark. Links in the description. Let's hit the news. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Before we get into the news, also, guys, we have to do one more thing. Next week is Denver, Com or this weekend, rather, is Denver Comic Con. So next week, we will not be doing the Week in Nerdum. We will have how-to con videos. We will have adventures in photography. We will have some cosplay stuff. I'm gonna try and finish getting all of my interviews edited and posted from the last conventions that we were at. Uh, the Mushroom Head episode should be going up. All kinds of stuff will still be happening, just no week in nerddom. Okay, now let's get into the news. This week in music, we've got a lot of really interesting stuff going on. We're coming out the gate though with some more Dark Knights metal music. This song, link in the description, is for, uh, it's called Brief Exchange. It's by Chino Moreno from the Deftones. Once again, produced by the same producers that are doing the whole record, uh, Tyler Bates and Mike Elizondo. Uh, this one took a second for me to really get into it. It's a little bit of a slow build. It's Chino, so you gotta get used to those vocals, but it, it's still a pretty solid track. Uh, not anything super great, nothing to really write home about, but again, something that will grow on you throughout the course of the song, let alone subsequent listens. So give it a, give it a listen, click the link down in the description. It's, this album is really shaping up to be something worth getting your hands on. It's going to be a one-time kind of thing for most of these collaborations, so uh, it's going to be something to have and something definitely to consume. Listen to however you got to do it. Uh, but again, check the link in the description. Remember, last time we talked about The Red Death was the song which had Bron Daler, the drummer from Mastodon, on vocals and then another, a slew of other musicians on the track. But this time we're talking Chino. It sounds... It sounds like Deftones Light. Uh, without all of the esoteric elements. So, I don't know, take with that what you will. Uh, but that's all we got there. Next on the list is the another track off of Devil Driver's uh, Rebels, uh, Country Rebels album. Country Rebels, is that what it was? Their new country album, a country album. It's really Devil Driver doing metal covers of country songs, sometimes featuring country artists. This time we're talking about Ghost Riders in the Sky. This is one of two tracks that, are, that feature Randy Blythe on vocals uh, alongside Des Ferreira, as well as John Carter Cash, Johnny Cash's son. Uh, this one, so I wasn't a huge fan of Country Heroes, the, the Hank 3 song that they covered with the aid of Hank 3. That one didn't really stand out to me as being a 
good track necessarily. It was an okay track. This one though, this, I hope the rest of the album has this feel to it because this legitimately feels like they adapted a metal tune or they adapted a country tune into a metal tune. Um, it's, it's a Johnny Cash cover as you probably guessed because they have Johnny Cash's son on the track, but just the balance of those elements, the, the obviously the metal drumming and then you have uh, a slightly more aggressive version of the country licks on the guitar and they they found a, a very cohesive balance between all of those elements and it stands out it is definitely worth a listen link to that is in the description below as well uh side note what is it with metal musicians and the dreadlocks these days it's i don't know it's just weird i think I, 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 I'm not, I'm not a fan of the dreadlocks. Randy and guitar player from Devil Driver, uh, what, what's with the dreadlocks? I don't get it. But anyway, we're kicking on to our next bit of news, which is Mike Shinoda. So we're leaving the realm of the heavy for a little bit. Mike Shinoda from Lincoln Park, uh, who has been doing side projects recently because of the death, death of Chester Bennington. Um, is putting out a new one called Post Traumatic. We've talked about it. He just released a track called Ghosts. There's an actual video for it if you follow the link in the description. The song, so he did He did that Fort Minor record a few years back, many years back at this point, it's like 2008 or so, um, Rising Tide, and that is easily one of my favorite hip hop records. Just really solid, really, really solid uh, songwriting and lyrical structure and everything about that record. I really, really, really dug. I, li I listened to that record nonstop for a good couple weeks. But uh, this track, this is him solo, so it's not as much hip hop. It's a little bit more, more pop. And that's kind of a difficult thing to say because, like, it doesn't have it doesn't it's not like a pop rock kind of tune like you would expect out of a Linkin Park member and it's not hip-hop like I said it's somewhere in this weird like vocal pop thing with hip-hop elements in it and it's just it's not bad it's definitely you can tell that Mike Shinoda is the melody man in Linkin Park um, so it sounds like those melody parts from Linkin Park. It's just a whole song of that. It's again, it's not bad. It's really, really catchy. So it's got that going for it. That's not a bad thing in this case. Sometimes the catchiness of a song definitely is a strike against it, but this isn't necessarily one of those times. Uh, he just, he needs to work out all this emo stuff, I think. And then we'll start getting uh, some hip hop out of Shinoda again, maybe. Uh, I um, Another Fort Minor record would not be a bad idea there, Mike. So just kind of throwing that out there, seeing if it sticks. But again, the track is worth listening to. This is not a mediocre track. If you like pop music, then definitely check out Shinoda's Ghosts. Again, link in the description. Next on the list is the Smashing Pumpkins, and they have put out a new tune. We knew they were in the studio together with the original lineup. I say it like this because there's no... The original bass player, Darcy Retzky, was not part of the recording process, and now they're going on tour, which she's also not going to be a part of, so you can't really call it the original. It's just, like, 75% original, because there were four members originally, and Darcy was one of them, so since she's not there, that kills one, so we've got three left, right? Um, the it, the new tune that they just put out, the name of the track is called Solara. This is better than when... <laughs> this is better than Swans, that's for damn sure. Uh, this is also better than that attempt that Billy Corgan had at doing Smashing Pumpkins by himself. That was a train wreck and a half. But this, it, it's... <laughs> I don't know, I feel like they haven't aged what maybe maybe missing Darcy is the element. It feels like there's something missing. Like it's a solid track, uh, definitely well written. James Eha, uh, the guitar player that plays alongside Billy, is is a great writer and, and is a great player. So he adds that layering that has been missing from Corgan's playing. 
since Smashing Pumpkins broke up. <laughs> so that's definitely a good thing. Uh, not a bad track. Again, we're just looking at a lot of mediocrity these days. So I just, I, I am a bit of a Smashing Pumpkins fan. I'm not a huge Uber fan of the Pumpkins, but I do really enjoy their music. This is something that if it came on the radio or if I happened to download it and put it on my iPod and it came on through shuffle, I definitely wouldn't skip it. I, I would, I would download it for sure. So Link to that song is in the description. Listen to it. What do you think? Do you feel like there's something missing just like I do? Am I losing my mind? Let's have that conversation. And then our last bit of music news this week, guys, is As I Lay Dying. We touched on it last week and then literally like two days after I recorded. So it was, uh, it was about uh, a day or two after the video went up. <laughs> it came out that, yes, As I Lay Dying, the entire band is coming out. And now there's been some fallout from this. So, again, for those of you that don't remember or didn't know, Tim Lambesis... Yeah. Tim Lambesis, the lead vocalist for As I Lay Dying, about three, four years ago, tried to hire a hitman to kill his wife. And he got caught, obviously, because I'm convinced that hitmen just don't actually exist. That's how all of these guys who try and hire hitmen always get caught. But anyway, uh, he tried to hire hitman, got caught, got convicted, and then was sent to prison. He was supposed to sp spend a six-year term. He did about two and a half years. Got out a little over a year ago, I believe was on parole for a while, just got off parole not that long ago, put out a video in December of last year that we discussed on the channel, um, saying, you know, what he did was absolutely appalling, and he's asking people to leave his family alone, it's not their fault that he did what he did, the band had nothing to do with what he did, so leave everyone that wasn't directly related, being he's the only person that was directly related, Leave them all alone. So that was that's kind of your uh, Reader's Digest version of what happened. So after we recorded the video last week, what we were talking about was the they put on their Facebook on the As I Lay Dying Facebook. There was a video that was obviously trying to hide the identity of the players in the video. We knew Tim Lambesis was going to be the vocalist for this entity, but that's all we knew for sure. Uh, being as the, the the whole band, from my understanding of it, the whole band has roots in in as as Christians. They're all Christians who make music together. They fall in that category that was really popular when metalcore really started going, where they happened to be people of faith who made music together. They didn't make faith-based music. They just were all Christians. It's many bands like that. Flyleaf. Flyleaf was a little more making Christian music, I feel like, but uh, 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 Unearth, or not Unearth, <laughs> Under Oath, um, uh, Devil Wears Prada, a bunch of those bands are all Christians. They, they call themselves a band of Christians that just make music, so they're not making Christian music. So As I Lay Dying has that background, so I anticipated personally that they were going to forgive Tim. I did not anticipate that they were going to go back into business with him because uh, they had their other band that they were doing while Tim was locked up, Wo uh, Wovencraft, I believe is what it was called, and it they were doing moderately well. They weren't pulling As I Lay Dying numbers, but they were still making a living and, and getting through. So, like, they didn't absolutely need him. But, I mean, there is something to be said about a brotherhood. Anyway, <laughs> so they've forgiven him. They're all back in the band. And that's caused a little bit of fallout because certain publication, who I won't mention on this channel anymore, um, because they just are so incredibly biased that it's painful to read their articles. has nothing to do with the fact that they're not going to feature... Uh, as I lay dying articles anymore, they are not going to support them by giving them free press, which is a little ridiculous. Um, it's the press's job when you're a metal publication. Publication. When you're a metal publication, 
and you like that's what you do and one of the biggest bands in the genre that you cover sure you can disagree with them sure you can run shitty articles about them go for it but like it doesn't make sense to not at all cover them especially when one of the editors of said publication claims to be at least buddies with one of the members of the band even though oh just so stupid so there's been a little bit of that kind of fallout but by and large it looks like their fan base is also super excited the reason we're talking about this again though i kind of have buried the lead at this point is they put out a new video you can check it in the description as I Lay Dying has always been a pretty heavy band. They've been a little too cookie cutter metalcore for me. Um, they, they, it's not. You, there's no guesswork in their dynamics. They're definitely a dynamic band. They have those up and downs, but you can see them coming a mile away. This isn't necessarily uh, breaking that mold at all. So it's what you would expect from as i lay dying i feel like this is probably a little more on their heavier side even so it's i i dug it just for that simple fact is that yeah this is pretty brutal but it's also super transparent it's like metal by numbers um so yeah it's it's been a really interesting i'm not gonna not talk about them if the, if something big and newsworthy happens around them i will definitely talk about it though because the music world is so large and because getting nerdy about that in requires a lot more people on staff than i have since i'm the only one uh definitely not going to like do a, uh, a comprehensive coverage of the band I don't do comprehensive coverage of really any band, and I'm a big fan of quite a few bands that we talk about on the show, so uh, that's kind of where we have to leave that because there's no other news. Uh, check out the video. I feel like I feel like the lyrics of the song, and and I, I would imagine the album that they're putting together are all going to be dealing with uh, uh, self redemption and and him getting through this horrible time in his life and 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 that's the that's kind of the, where i want to leave this is i honestly feel like yeah he did a terrible terrible thing and i honestly believe that he's going to be paying for that with his ticket sales and so on and so forth uh but this unnamed publication that i referenced said that he doesn't deserve like there are there are it's so lefty. Oh, you guys are so freaking lefty. Um, there are programs in place for inmates when they get out of prison to reintegrate them back into society. And that's what he should take advantage of. He shouldn't be allowed to sell music anymore. He shouldn't be allowed to make music anymore. And if a welder goes to prison for trying to kill his wife, let's say, then gets out, he can go right back to being a welder. But if a musician goes to prison for trying to kill his wife, then he can't go back to being a musician. I, and these, these are guys, these are kids. Let's, let's be honest. They're all younger than me or about my age, at least. Uh, these that have been doing this since high school so he doesn't really have a different skill set and prison doesn't give you a different skill set prison is there to warehouse criminals they're not it's not there to rehabilitate anyone if you look into it you'll understand what i'm saying anyone who's gotten out of prison there are some prisons uh, i will admit there are some prisons throughout the country that are different there are some prison programs some incarceration programs that are legitimately trying to re rehabilitate uh their inmates however by and large our prison system is solely there to warehouse people and in so doing makes them better better criminals so if tim lambesis is legitimately trying to better himself is legitimately trying to make the world around him a better place albeit through music sure he's probably going to make a lot of money because he is in one of the biggest metalcore bands in the world like i can't i can't fault the guy for going back to what he knows that just doesn't make any sort of logical sense uh, i can not go to his concerts i can 
not buy any any of his music or merchandise absolutely but being as i try and be pretty even with my coverage unless somebody else brings politics into it then we'll talk a little bit of their politics and break them down and how they're wrong <laughs> but just yeah sorry i know i said i was going to quit like twice but that's where we're going to leave this yeah uh, I'm, I'm i'll make an obscene video that'll really get into this but that's the end of music news this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss, though? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place where you can find all the freebies. You can find the links to the social media. You can go get your nerdy swag. This shirt is going to be linked on the website. I haven't got to the link yet, but it will be up there very, very soon. Um... Or, if you don't want to buy any swag, but you do want to support the channel, you can support the channel for just a dollar a month over on patreon.com slash generally nerdy. That is the place that, again, you can jump on for just a dollar a month. And I honestly give away way too much on that dollar. So, go take advantage of my generosity over at patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you're new to the channel, though, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind with your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face or click the one above it to check out something else on the channel but before we go clicking boxes and visiting websites guys always always remember that if it's generally nerdy it's probably here